Father Pierre Condre is a priest with the St. Thomas Chaldean Catholic Diocese. Through scripture, he shows viewers how we all can encounter Jesus, and our encounters with him ultimately strengthen our faith and deepen our relationships. Here is Encountering Jesus. But Mary stayed outside the tomb weeping. And as she wept, she bent over into the tomb and saw two angels in white sitting there, one at the head and one at the feet where the body of Jesus had been. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken my Lord, and I don't know where they laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus there, but did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? She thought it was the gardener and said to him, Sir, if you carried him away, tell me where you laid him, and I will take him. Jesus, Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Raboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Stop holding on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I am going to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary of Magdala went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord and what he told her. We have in the Gospel of John this great resurrection scene, the scene of the Lord appearing to Mary Magdala outside of the tomb. And she's there weeping and as the angels kind of tell her, go and find the Lord, find Jesus. She's confused, she's weeping, she doesn't know what to do. And when she first sees Jesus, she doesn't recognize him and calls him gardener. Eventually she figures it out. So we first have is this idea of, of weeping, like, why, why are you weeping? Feeling let down by a loved one, issues, a death in the family, whatever it is, we all have our own situations that can cause us sadness, despair, a weeping. And the Lord, the Lord can offer us a sense of consolation a sense of knowing there's more to this. And how? It's through His resurrection. That through Jesus' great resurrection of, uh, from the dead, we have the chance of eternal life, the chance of, of consolation from our sicknesses, from our heartaches, from everything we have that brings us down. Also in our, in our spiritual life, in our prayer life, in your prayer life, as we pray, as we go closer to God, Oftentimes we can feel as if we're alone. Feel as if we're like Mary. She went to the tomb to see her Lord, to see Jesus that she knew was her Lord and Savior. And as she went inside, it was empty and she was weeping and she was sad. Where is he? I came for Jesus and he's not there. All she saw were angels, which is miraculous, which is great, but it's not what she was looking for. But that's what she found. That's what the Lord had given her. So sometimes we go to prayer, as we should be praying constantly, daily. Oftentimes when we go, we don't quite feel the presence of Jesus. But we need to, and we can, and we should. But if there's a time when we don't feel the presence of Jesus, and it's okay, it's fine, it's great. The Lord is still saying, I am still present here. Even if you don't recognize me, I have still resurrected. I have still saved you from all your sins and salvation and given you the glimpse of eternal life, even if you don't quite feel it. And that's, that's beautiful. That's a part of our prayer that has to be a point of growth. That yeah, we don't feel Jesus. He's not quite as present as we might want him to be. We have to have the faith to endure anyway. That's really important. Also, as Mary first turns and sees Jesus, she calls him the gardener. This kind of phrase, this word that kind of just, maybe she was confused, maybe because of his clothes, maybe because where he physically was, maybe it was a garden. She calls him the gardener. 
and it can seem like, okay, doesn't quite matter, but it's beautiful. It's important that Jesus is in the garden just like Adam was in the garden. And just like through Adam, one man's sin, one man's fault caused all of humanity to fall into sin, to fall into destruction, through one man's sacrifice and resurrection, we have redemption. We have the glory. How beautiful is that? To really pray with that. That yeah, Jesus is a Lord and Savior and everything about that, but really when it comes down to it, He is God. God knew He had to redeem all of humanity through His resurrection, so He gave us this one man. This one man that would save us all. And it had to be human. He had to be like us to show us resurrection, eternal life, the glimpse of all of it. And just like Jesus in the, in the garden, He has made all things new. He has recreated everything. Because God first started with, with Eden and causing life through Eden, He wanted us to live in paradise there. But we couldn't do it. As humans, we've fallen. We've failed. So we needed a Redeemer. We needed someone to save us. And it was Jesus. And it was Jesus in a garden showing us that now I am the new creation. I make all things new. Everything that has fallen, I have made brand new and given you glory and given it to God. How wonderful is that? How great is that? That we have such a great and wonderful and loving God who is willing to do anything it takes to give us back that paradise. That paradise that He first gave us, now He's giving it to us again, but on a 10 million times a more amazing scale because now we can enter into a relationship with Him, a dialogue with a God-man, individual who is God and man who is like us. He knows us. He wants to be with us. He constantly longs for our presence. And we go to Him in that great presence. So in your prayer, as we go to pray, you know, once again, hopefully, hopefully daily, as we approach Jesus, oftentimes one of the issues can be is that we don't recognize Jesus. We don't recognize who He is. We can be there praying, pray our rosary, pray in front of the Eucharist, pray with the scriptures. And we can just say, why are we here? What's the point of it all? Does it quite matter? And the focus of it all, the foundation of it all, has to be the resurrection and this great scene in the gospel story. That that's what Jesus did. That's, that's the part of his life that really no one can quite refute. If you believe in that, everything else follows. The empty tomb, this great mystery of faith, the empty tomb of Jesus Christ. It's the resurrection. And in that resurrection, are we recognizing who Jesus is? Because, you know, all, the, all those times of great prayer, praying in front of a crucifix, praying in front of the, the, the Eucharist or the scriptures or the rosary, any sort of very traditional prayer which is beautiful and essential to our faith life, there it's easy to recognize Jesus. But in our lives, do we recognize Jesus elsewhere? In the simple things, in the easiest part of our lives, in our family lives, with our spouses and siblings and parents and children, how do we recognize Jesus there? That He is there. He's present there. And we have to serve Him and love Him just like that. As if we were at the tomb of the resurrection. That we're there praising God, looking for God, looking for the resurrected Lord, and we don't find Him and we're sad. We have to recognize that He's always there. Always present and those around us. And that's how we worship God. That's how He truly, truly gives it to God. And think of opportunities in your life. Think of something as simple as, as a workplace to kind of show people Jesus. That we recognize Jesus in our lives and we give Him our lives and we go to His presence and we find His presence. We, we believe and have faith in His resurrection 
And then what does Mary do? By the command of Jesus, Mary goes to his disciples, to his brothers, and tells them, I have seen the Lord. I have seen the resurrected Jesus. Isn't that amazing? That's great. That's so crucial. That's such a part of our lives. We're all called to that great understanding of what we have to do after we recognize the resurrection of Jesus. Is to go. To go out there and show the world. I have seen the resurrected Jesus. Because that's everything. It's everything. How are you doing that? Do you go out to your family? Do you go out to your friends and tell them, hey look, this is I know this Jesus guy. Maybe you weren't physically there at the resurrection of Jesus. But you have that faith, that understanding to open your heart to receive Jesus, to receive the resurrected Jesus. And oftentimes I'll get into to discussions with people about, about faith and things of that sort. And we'll go back and forth about them and we'll say, oh, well, this issue and that issue and priests and Eucharist and the Pope or whatever goes down. The conversations kind of flow that way. And then I'll kind of stop and say, well, what about the resurrection of Jesus? People say, well, that takes a lot of faith to believe in. That's, Father, that's really hard to understand. That's really hard to accept. Well, we need to. It's the focus of it all. We have to say, this is Jesus. Because without the resurrection, it's all empty. It's just the death of a really strong leader. But it wasn't. He's not just a hero to us. He is our Savior. He is our Redeemer. He is the new Adam. The resurrection. That's what it is. That's what we have. Open your hearts to it. And think of the, the blood of the martyrs. That's always the foundation. It's always the argument I turn to. Is the blood of the martyrs. These individuals who saw the resurrected Jesus went across the world preaching Jesus Christ, preaching the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and oftentimes were killed for it. These eyewitnesses, these historical, factual people in place, in time, and in space who saw Jesus walking around, saw Him die, and saw Him after the, His death walking around because He had defeated death, this one part of life that none of us can defeat, Jesus has defeated in his resurrection. Yet sometimes we weep. Sometimes we go to Jesus and we don't feel him. But he's there, my dear brothers and sisters. He is there with you, holding on to you, saying, look at me now. Now go and tell the world of the resurrection. Go and tell the world, your family, your friends, your loved ones, I have seen the Lord. And this encounter with Jesus is so crucial to the gospel stories. That this woman is the first one to see Jesus. That we need to encounter and come to the resurrected Jesus just like she did. And find peace in our, con in our, in our difficulties. Find peace in our, in our weeping, in our sadness, in our gloom, in our issues of life. That's what we have to do. So let's go to Jesus now in prayer and ask Him to open our hearts to show us His resurrection, to increase our faith that in times we don't recognize who He is, when we go to Him and find an empty tomb, that we know of His presence, we know of His love anyway. Dear Heavenly Father, as we pray today with the resurrection of Jesus, with the encounter of Jesus and Mary Magdala, we ask You to open our hearts. Help us to see and to believe and to embrace your resurrection. There are times in our faith life and our lives in general where we feel alone, we feel unconsoled. Console us, Lord. Show us your grace. Show us your love. Show us your mercy. That we may always come to you in prayer and in love and in faith and find you there and recognize you and give you glory and praise and honor as you deserve. We ask you for the grace and the strength to be like Mary today, who went and told the disciples, who went and told the world of the resurrection. We may gain souls for you, gain souls for salvation. 
Amen. Amen.